Welcome back, everybody. Uh, welcome anybody new here. Today's Tackle Tip Tuesday is all about this beastly right here. And all about ice fishing for that beastly right there. So we're going to do the top five lures that I would recommend 100% for sticking a big, I guess you would call him an ice pig. <laughs> so stay tuned. All right, so today's top five lures are going to be something that I would definitely always have on hand in one size or another if I plan on targeting big winter walleye. And if you're fishing for walleye, I mean, you can get away with small stuff, you can get away with really big stuff. But if you have at least this kind of diversity, so five lures, you only really need the five. Um, obviously, there's a million other ways to catch fish like this. But these are my top five. And if you carry them, I can promise you at least one of them will start catching you walleye. If you're on walleye. you got to do the research first. So uh, we're going to start with something big and work small for the finesse. So uh, I always try and start with like the biggest thing. Because if they're active and they're biting big, why not? All right, so like I was saying, the first thing I start with is something big. And I'm going to go over basically how you should start fishing for these stuff, or these fish, those guys right there. Um, when, you're ch when you're chasing big walleye, um, you have to start with like a different spectrum. Um, obviously, it, when you're ice fishing, it all depends on the beginning or the middle or the end of the season, body water. All the crazy things that go off with it. But first things first. What you want to start with is something loud and obnoxious. And anything that's got a bait fish profile like these guys do. Uh, this is an ultralight. No, this is just a rip and wrap. Number six. Um, something I wanted to show you guys. So this is just one of the good colors. I don't remember what color this is. I think it glows. But if it doesn't. I know this color works in stained water and in clear water. So it's a dual purpose color. That's why I have this one specifically. Um, let me go through these real quick here. So just so you guys understand, this entire row is rip and wraps. And then actually I have a couple other ones. Um, what I'm gonna show you here is so Number six, number five, you see the size difference there. Um, and then here, we'll just grab the one that I use the most. Where is it? Is that, that right there? No. This one. Um, so this is a number four. This is considered an ultralight rip and wrap. So this is the smaller version. They make a number three. Um, I'm not even going to pull them out, but I have a box of them. <laughs> That's just proof that this is one of the, th I mean, it's aside from walleyes, it works for everything else. But like, if you just had one of these baits, so one of the five, uh, you could have a set of number sixes. So like three or four different colors of these, you could have a set of number fives. So three or four different colors of those, you could have a set of number fours. And then you could do the same thing I did here and get yourself a good uh, variety of number threes. So this is the smallest one they make. And I don't, I don't know if they make a bigger than seven. If you guys know if they make a bigger than, or six, this is a six. I think they make seven. If you know that, comment below. Let me know if they make a seven uh, because then I'm going to get it. Because <laughs> I know some bodies of water where they would definitely crush a number seven even though uh, it seems like it would be really large because this is a number six. Um, a lot of people forget in the wintertime, walleye are hunters. They're not scavengers. They will pick off a minnow or a dead minnow or they'll bite minnow heads and stuff like that. But if you have something like this and they're on an active feeding day, when you rip this, when you rip it, it makes a bunch of noise and then it darts all over the place. So it, it calls them in from a distance. So if you're on a spot where there should be walleye and they might be close by, that's why this is the ideal 
bait to drop down, whether it's this one, the four, the five, or the, the one. The one's got like little baby BBs, BBs in it, so it's not as loud as this thing is, or even the number three or four, or the four or five. But honestly, if you drop this down and nothing shows up, I mean, even if it is too aggressive, they usually come in to check it out. So if you don't see fish, move. It's that simple. Everybody wonders how I get on fish right away. It's usually because the holes that I did drop baits down, like this one, you guys won't see a lot of times. Sometimes I'll, I'll show you guys me hopping from hole to hole a couple different times uh, before I actually catch the fish. But a lot of times it's I drop this down like 20 different holes, nothing showed up. I did, I, you know, I changed a couple lures here and there, but still nothing showed up. And really, if nothing shows up to investigate this, because almost all fish will come in and check it out, doesn't mean they're going to bite it. But this will tell you if there's fish below you. Uh, so that's the number one, I would say, is the rip and wrap from uh, Rapala. I will post, like I do all the time, um, my Amazon links below. Um, if you buy stuff from there, it obviously helps my channel out because I think I get like a little percentage of that or something like that. I don't even know how that works. I don't get paid very much money from it, but I do get a little bit of money from it every once in a great while, so every penny helps. So if you guys are going to buy it anyways, um, my links will be in the description below. And go ahead, buy as many as you need. Um, if you guys want them, hopefully you can see... This color right here, this one right here, this color, so I don't know what colors these are. You'd have to look at them. Um, obviously, this one's just silver, but then uh, I think this is Glow Perch. This one, and I don't know if I have it in a number four right now. No, I do. I do. It does work. right here. So those three, and then this color. So this is like a, this is an all glow body and I think it's a clown head. I'm not sure. It might just be the glow. This is a number four, by the way. I don't know if they make this in the other one, but if you can get all four of these colors so that uh, the first one, the second one, and the, the glow perch, this, and then this glow. If you get those four colors in each size, so like a number six, a number five, a number four, and a number three, if there's fish around and you learn how to work these things, I promise you'll catch fish. All right, so this will be number two. And as you can see, it's glow and it's beat up because it catches fish. Um, most of that scuff you see on the tail, that's from fish eating this thing a bunch. Uh, this is, I think, a number three. I'm pretty sure this is a number three jigging rod. Um, but if you guys are wondering, like confidence level, and honestly, I mean, if you're going to have a bunch of any one lure, obviously these all work. I promise you, if you drop this one first, you'll find out if there's fish around. Usually if I can't get them to go on that, I will go to this. And if I need to, I have options. <laughs> so... This big one right here, I reserve for anything that's going to eat this anyways, but sometimes they don't want that rattle, so this is one of the ones that I go to. But otherwise, you have all these different sizes, so there's like number twos or threes or whatever. I think these are twos. I think these are threes or fours. No, I think those are threes. I think these are fours. Um, but as you can see, like that's my color palette. That's kind of how I've always done it. Um, but yeah. The jigging wrap is the biggest go-to lure of any walleye body water. So if you are fishing and it is a body of water that you know has walleye in it, this is the one to go. So you can put, you know, you can put wax worms and stuff on here or a minnow head. I've fished them with minnow heads, but nine times out of ten I can get them to go on just this. Um, the way this swims, it kind of does this like up and around in a circle thing as you do upward sweeps or like slight little jigging motions to get it to rock so you kind of want it to just rock in place it's all playing with it um obviously if you guys want me to do some more in-depth like how i was working a bait as i you know if i catch a fish in a video and you see me catch a fish um do you want me to do like how i caught that bait like exactly how i was working it so that when you get this bait um, you can work it the exact same way, I guess. 
uh, leave that in the comments below for me. Just kind of give me some suggestions so that I can uh, help you guys out more this winter. And then obviously, like I said, I'm gonna I'll list jigging wraps below. Um, but it's your choice. I mean, honestly, glow is always a good color. Um, this I think it's chrome blue is always a good color. And then clown, yeah, the clown is always a good color too. Um, otherwise, it's kind of like body of water specific. Like sometimes this blaze or the uh, UV pink works in uh, stained water. And then like the perch colors and then tigers or what are fire tigers. They work in different bodies of water. So it's always fish dependent. But obviously start with something and then work from there. If I was going to start with anything, I'd probably start with one of these guys. So one glow in like three different sizes and then um one of these guys the uh, the clown so like a number two a number three and a number four would probably be the colors or the sizes i would go through so those three sizes in this color so that's number two this is the uh, the jigging wrap from rapala so you got the ripping wrap and then the jigging wrap all right, so you you went with the first one to always have on hand is the rip and wrap. It rattles, it's annoying, it brings fish in to check things out. If you can't get them to go on that, nine times out of ten, um, well, not necessarily nine times, about half the time, you can get them to go on one of these jigging wraps. Uh, like I said, when you rip them like upward, they shoot forward. So if there's a fish coming in to check it out and it shoots forward away from them, they're... Uh, what do you call that? Their instinct makes them, you know, out of a reaction strike will sometimes just snap and they'll hit it. And that's why you can get them to hit it without any bait on it because it's really just a, like a, a fleeing minnow type thing where they're like, oh, I have to eat that. Um, but if they won't go on this because it's too aggressively darting around or whatever or you're moving it too much, the next one, number three out of the five, is this guy. And it looks awesome because it is. <laughs> this is, uh, I think they call it the slab wrap from Rapala. Uh, I'm not sponsored by Rapala by any means. I would love to be, but honestly, they make good stuff. Most of their most of their gear is pretty good. It's durable, and I've been using it for years. So why not help you guys out and uh, you know get your own stuff? But so this is a slab wrap, and I think yeah. So this is a number four. I don't know if they make a number three. It'd be kind of cool because if it was a number three, it'd be smaller. And I know some bluegills that would eat that. Anyways, getting sidetracked. Um, for walleye, I would go number three and bigger. Um, but the slab wrap is kind of one of those in-between baits. So this guy is like when you're getting at the lower end of the spectrum, there's no noise. So it's it doesn't have any rattle like the uh, rip and wrap does. And it doesn't dart as drastically as the jigging wrap. So, like, as you're getting away from that darting motion with a little dart here and there, and then it kind of shimmers like a, a, a lipless crankbait as you just kind of drag it up and down, um, those subtle motions, sometimes when the fish are kind of in a negative mood, that's when you would really shine with this one. And this is obviously a glow perch. Like I said, it's one of those colors. If you guys get glow perch, you'll usually catch some walleye on it at some point. Because perch, or walleye love eating perch. And this is, that's a snack. So if they're there and they're negative, meaning they're turned off and they're not looking at those bigger baits and they're getting scared from the, the noise, this guy will get eaten up real quick. It's a perfect minnow bait and... Honestly, it's one of my favorite uh, go-tos when they're in a negative mood. But I like finding fish in a positive mood because I'd rather rip the big bait and have them slam it. So, <laughs> But the Slab Wrap uh, by R Rapala. So I'm going to, like I said, I'm going to list all five of these in the comments or in the description below. Um, comment below if you've ever used any of these baits and um, you know maybe if you can help some other people out. Uh, mention how you work the one that you're used to using. So like if you use this, how do you work it? Um, maybe I can learn something from you and figure out how to work it a little bit better. Maybe fish it differently. You know, how how you fish it or where you fish it, you know, makes a difference. So comment below that. I'd like to, I'd like to hear from you guys and you know, what you have to say about these different lures. All right, so fourth and second from the last, 
is going to be this guy. Um, we got gold slender spoon and green tape. Everybody can thank James Holst for that freaking thing being burned into my hand, brain. I have so many of these and I don't know what to do with them because they do work. <laughs> the thing is, is this works for perch, uh, perch, crappie, bluegill, and walleye. Um, and obviously you can see like my thumb. This is a smaller one. I have bigger ones. And I forgot what box I have them in here. Let me see. Okay, yeah. So I have some of them in here. And then uh, the other one's a tangler spoon. Um, that's what these are. But, I mean, I just kind of lumped those together. So there's the tangler, tangler spoon. And then there's the slender spoon. The slender spoon, I believe, came out first. So that's just kind of the one I've always gone to. And then, obviously, the gold color with the green tape tends to just work better for walleye. Wherever, you know, wherever walleye are. And then they make these in a bunch of different sizes. I think this is a 3 16th ounce size. Um, they make them in like a 1 32nd ounce size. It's like the size of the tape. But then they make them in bigger sizes too, which I have all the different sizes. Um, but this is just ultra finesse. It's got so much flutter to it. Uh, my favorite thing to use with it is putting a minnow head on there with a little bit of extra meat. So instead of keeping just like just the minnow head, you try to get like a little bit of body with it and hang that off of here. Because then what that does is it like flutters that on the way down, giving a bunch of scent and a little bit more uh, like body to the structure of the bait. So when as you're fishing it, it just tends to work a little bit better than just putting like spikes or something on here or just a little minnow head obviously that works and then like i said it just depends on the size and everything like that this just happens to be the one i pulled out but you can obviously see them at, uh, like i said linked in the description below you'll see when you look at them they make a bunch of different sizes i'll try to get the link that lets you choose all the different sizes uh but this one i know the the gold with green tape or chartreuse tape or whatever uh works really good Okay, last but not least, it's kind of like, the problem I have here is I have f four of these I will promise that I will use. So like, well, at least the first three, I always use them. Uh, this slender spoon is one of those things like when the walleye are really shallow. So if you're fishing walleye that tend to be, you know, eight feet or less of water, which some lakes, that's, that's just where the walleye are. You just have to figure out where they're at and, you know, early ice or late ice. Uh, when they're shallower for either or. This comes in handy because the way it drops, it flutters out. Uh, and by doing that, if you're only in like six feet of water, you can cover a lot more distance away from your hole. And then as you're bringing it back in after it flutters out, they can chase it. It gives them something to chase. So it's just like fishing an open water lure under the ice. Uh, so for ice fishing, honestly, it is really a good one to have. I just don't use it as often because nine times out of ten, I'm fishing deeper water for walleye. But the fifth one works everywhere. Um, this is the Buckshot Rattle Spoon. And you can, it's got a really quiet rattle chamber, but it's it's subtle. It's enough to get their attention. And then these come with these good... Uh, hooks for it's got the round bend on them um for putting minnow heads on the buckshot rattle spoon is such a subtle little just heavy chunk of meat floating around with a rattle to it that it's one of those things where like if the fish is coming in and they're coming up you see them on like your electronics and they're coming up and then just kind of going back down and coming up and going back down you can kind of keep this just above them and instead of like pulling it away to get them to chase and hit it, you can just kind of, you can do like a little bounce in place. And what that does is it just lets that minnow head flop around and then that, the tiny little rattles inside there to, to kind of bounce around. You can give this one pops and stuff like that. And because of the way it's kind of built like a torpedo, it'll shoot up and off in different directions, which is nice because it's kind of a random thing. Um, which draws attention to it, but I like it mainly just for the sake of like You want something on you know on a different rod that can hold a minnow head real good It's got great paint to it and it you know, it's built tough. So like it's gonna last you forever if you get one um, but this is kind of like a 
I will actually dead stick these sometimes. So like you'll be jigging one thing and you'll just have this sitting in a, in a hole next to you. And what you do is if a fish comes in and it goes away from the, you know, say you're jigging this thing and it's making a bunch of noise, but he goes up and then he comes back down and goes up and comes back down and then he disappears off of your uh, electronics. But this is down there at the same level you're jigging at. All you got to do is give this a couple little pops and it's got that little bead in it and that, you know, you just pop it a couple of times and just let it sit and just let it dead stick. Cause what will happen is they'll, they'll come in on the one thing and they'll come over and hit this right afterwards, even if it's just sitting still. So just watch your, you know, look over and watch your rod tip, you know, rip the big thing and then sit. And if you see them going away, just watch your other rod tip after you bounce it once. Uh, nine times out of ten, you're going to catch the fish on the dead stick. And uh, it's just always good to have. It's good practice. Um, I'm going to try and give you guys a bunch of on-ice tips this year, so that way you guys are learning as you're watching as much as you want to see that. Comment below if you guys actually want me to do on-ice tips like this. Uh, the reason I'm doing these is because it's a lot easier to do this than sit in a boat and do it. Uh, or on a shoreline when you got to deal with a bunch of other things, uh, outside stuff. So it's just easier to do it in the fish cave and I can, you know, mod moderate what everything sounds like. But, um, yeah, I would honestly say this is probably going to be your best five lures. If you're going to get into walleye fishing and your plans are to, you know, only walleye fish for the day or something like that then you can, you know, bring these ones with you and that way you have basically everything to cover what you need. I hope I helped you guys out a little bit. I hope you guys learn a little bit from these Tackle Tip Tuesdays. The big reason I'm doing them is so you guys can shorten your learning curves. That's the whole reason I'm doing this. It's the whole point is like fishing is fun when you catch no fish. So like it's fun. You can get out there and go catch fish or not catch fish but like the adventure the fun the discovery of like failing the whole thing is you have to fail in order to figure stuff out so that's the whole reason i'm giving you all these options is you can go down the list that i had to develop in my head over years and you can just do it you can just take that stuff with you and go well this one didn't work switch to this one to this one to this one to this one and the big thing is is like just because one of these five didn't work doesn't mean the fish aren't biting but it's a pretty good indicator that you're going to have a hard day. <laughs> uh, either way, I mean, you're out fishing, so it's a good day. But I'd rather see you guys out there catching fish. Um, do me a favor. If any of you guys are out ice fishing this winter and you're on Instagram, tag at DWSDave31 and tag me in some photos. I want to see any one of you guys are posting anything cool i mean i don't care if it's a fish this big or if you got a new pb which i still have to beat <laughs> i have a couple ideas where i can do that but i don't know that's an eight pound 28 inch walleye so we've only got a couple of options but i know if i do beat it it's probably going to be a buy a lot so <laughs> fingers across for that either way i hope you guys uh enjoyed today's video and i hope i help a lot of you guys out Obviously, if you're not new here, you know what's up, but if you are new, please just remember to...